In Android Studio 2.2, we've greatly improved the Visual Layout Editor, including built-in support for Constraint Layout. Constraint Layout is a great new way to define complex layouts without the need for nested view hierarchies thanks to a flexible constraint system. It's available in the support repository and works all the way down to API level 9. To install it in Android Studio, open the SDK Manager and select both the Constraint Layout for Android and Solver for Constraint Layout from the SDK Tools tab. To use it in your project, add the dependency in build.gradle. Now, create a new layout file with the Constraint Layout as the root view. Notice that in Android Studio 2.2, the layout editor gained a few new features, such as the Blueprint mode, which you can use alongside the design view if you wish. On the right side of the screen, you can see the redesigned view inspector. Here you can switch between the commonly used view properties and the full list. The inspector also includes constraint layout specific layout attribute editors, which I'll show you in a moment. First, let's start by dragging an image view from the palette onto the blueprint. You can see that every view in a constraint layout has four handles on the sides, top, right, bottom, and left. Views that inherit from text view also have a baseline handle. To position views relative to each other, you can click and drag from one handle to another of the same type. Here I'm placing a text view in the layout and aligning it to the right of the image view by creating a constraint from the left handle. I'm also aligning the views vertically by adding a top constraint. The views are still a bit too close together, so I can adjust the margin by dragging the constraint view in Design Preview or I can use the Properties window on the right. That looks better. The only thing that remains is positioning our views inside the parent container. By enabling the Show Constraints settings in the toolbar, I can see that there are currently no constraints pointing to the outer edges of the layout. My two views would simply get moved to position 0 at runtime. By connecting the top and left handles to the parent edges, I can specify how I want to position the views in the con container. What if I want to center a view instead of gluing it to the left or right side of the screen? I'll create a new text view and center it horizontally within the layout by connecting both sides to the parent. You can see the view now has constraints pulling it both ways. Because constraint layout can't satisfy both constraints at the same time, the view remains centered. If you now look at the properties window, you can see a slider called horizontal bias. By changing the percent value using the slider, I can influence the strength or weight of each constraint which results in moving the view slightly to the left or right. You can also change the desired width and height of a view by cycling through three modes, wrap content, fixed size, and match constraints. You shouldn't be using match parent in constraint layouts and use match constraints instead, which basically means that the view can grow up to the available space while still satisfying its constraints. To remove a constraint, click on one of the sides of the box shown in the properties window or click on a handle in the design view. You can also delete all constraints on a single view by clicking here, or remove all constraints in the layout using the button in the toolbar. We're continuously improving both runtime performance as well as editor capabilities, so always make sure that you update to the newest version in the SDK Manager and your build files. And check out our code lab and article on Medium for more advanced constraint layout examples. Thanks for watching, and if you want to learn more about Android Studio and Android development, click on one of the videos here.